Hey guys, this is JB with Marketing 360. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. In this walkthrough, we're gonna take a look at an infographic we created, which really breaks down 10 tips on how to build basically a convertible lead generating website. So if you have a website and your goal is to generate more leads and get more out of it, this is perfect for you. We're gonna walk through these 10 tips and, and some insights in between along the way. So let's take a look at my screen, an infographic we created, and this kind of walks us through these different steps and we'll kind of give you some tips along the way. So let's jump right in. So 10 key points for a convertible lead generating website. Tip number one is two and a half second rule. Guys, you wanna make sure that your site within two and a half seconds gets your message across. That's really all the time that your visitor is gonna give you these days unfortunately. So within two and a half seconds, they have to be able to tell who you are, what you do, and how to contact you. And if they can't, they're probably going to hit the back button, which is called bounce. And so you want to think about that. Is the message clear, right? And also you want to check on the mobile phone. Look on the phone because 80 plus percent of traffic these days is on the phone. So if your site doesn't look good on the phone, if it isn't clear who you are, what you do, how to contact you, what makes you different within that two and a half seconds, then you're probably going to fail that test and they're going to hit the back button. They're going to look at one of your competitors. So take a look at your site. Take a look at some of your competitors and do you stand apart and are you better in that area if they can tell who you are what you do how to contact you within two and a half seconds what they're going to generally do is stay longer they're going to give you more time which is what you want but if you don't even pass a two and a half second rule you don't even get a chance to play in the game so make sure that you pass that test Second thing here is to incentivize the user to take action. So call to action is key, guys. Don't just say who you are, what you do. Make sure to say how to contact you, and contact you might be how to take that next step, how to convert, right? How to make that purchase or fill out that lead form or request that consultation, whatever it might be. You wanna make sure that that's clear on your website and that you're making a relevant call to action to what they're interested in. So if they're interested in pricing, say, hey, get pricing right now with a form that leads them to a price sheet. They gotta you know, submit their name, phone, email to get that, but this would be a way to generate leads. Or if they want help right now, hey, 24 seven emergency support, call right now, get more phone calls. You know, Think about what you do and what your consumers are looking for. What are your customers looking for? What questions do they want answered? How do you make that with regards to a call to action to get them to take that next step to become a lead so that you can reach out and turn them into a customer? Next thing here to think about within this same topic is promotions and deals, instant coupons. Think about other things, other call to actions you can include that really are almost like making a sense of urgency in the consumer's mind. So like, hey, I can't even wait. Uh, I better just reach out to these people right now, you know? If you can come up with some special deals or anything in that regard to get somebody to pull the trigger, create that sense of urgency that's gonna help increase your conversion rate. Another thing that increases your conversion rate is video. So you can see the stat we have here, it's pretty impressive, 400% increase in conversions with video. Um, I mean, seeing up to a 400% increase in conversions is huge. So if you were getting 10 leads a month to your website, adding a video could potentially mean now you're getting 40 right? That's 400%. So that's huge, right? Think of how many sales you would get if you could get four times as many leads. So a video can do that for you. The video should be short and sweet. It should be professional. It should be your perfect sales pitch. So essentially every time somebody goes to your website and watches that video, it's essentially the perfect sales pitch every time. It makes that sales pitch 24 hours a day to a thousand people at the exact same time. It works 24 seven through the holidays, never calls in sick. It's unbelievable, right? Your sales person should be your video. And so think about what your call to action is to get people to watch the video. And then what's your one minute sales pitch? You know, if somebody, if, if, if I said, hey, give me your one minute sales pitch, that's all the time you have, what would you say to get me to go with you? That should be your script for your video. If you make that the script of your video, it's gonna crush it, so think about that. There's one really good tip here that I think is overlooked a lot, and that's have three call to actions above the fold. So above the fold means without somebody needing to scroll down pretty much. So when they load your website, even if it's on their mobile phone, above the fold without them needing to scroll down, they should have three call to actions. Maybe there's a call us button, maybe there's a get a free quote button, and maybe there's a find us, you know, get directions to our, our office button, something like that. You know, that's just an example. And it could even be three buttons of the same thing. We've seen that before. But three buttons is important because some people look up on the top of the site. Some people kind of look into the content in the middle part of the site. And some people look near the bottom. So you want to cover all those areas to make sure that every different type of person and user, their eyeballs get on that call to action and hopefully they turn into a lead and they convert. So let's look at value prop number three, tip number three, and that's creating value. 
you need to create value, really make it clear to the customer why they should take action. Like why should they use your service? You know, why use you over a competitor? What makes you different? That should be clear on your homepage. And if it is, you're going to see an increase in conversions and that's going to be pretty powerful. The other thing is, is it clear what the quality of your service is? Is it clear, you know, if there's call to actions displayed on your website in different pieces, do those take the user to a different, uh, like additional information to convert? For example, if you're a roofing company and you have gutter repair services and commercial roofing services and residential roofing services, maybe that initial call to action isn't necessarily to get them to become a lead right yet. Maybe it's just to get them to learn more about that service they're interested in. So if I was interested in a residential roof, I don't really care about commercial roof. I don't really care about gutter repair at this point. I just want to learn more about commercial roof. Maybe it's clear on your site, there's a button that says, hey, learn more about our residential roofing. And I could click that, it would take me into that page. I could learn more about it. Or if I was interested in commercial, I could click on the commercial button and I could go and learn more about that. And then at that point, there's call to actions. Hey, get a free roofing quote. Now here's where it's important about relevancy. If I clicked on the residential roofing uh, button to go to that page to learn more, the call to action there should be relevant to that. So it should say essentially, get a free residential roofing quote. You see how that is exactly what I'm looking for? Whereas if I went to the commercial page, it should, it should say something like, get a free commercial roofing quote. So this is tying the call to action into the relevance of your site, making it much more targeted, right? And that's gonna increase your conversion rate. So make sure you're taking advantage of that stuff. Next thing here, tip number four, is it easy for the user to convert? At the end of the day, pretend you don't know anything about your business. Pretend that you're just a general person that just landed on your site. Could you find your way essentially to check out? Could you find your way to becoming a lead, to find the phone number, to filling out a lead form, to learning more information? It should be very easy to use on your website. And then let other people test it. Test it with your family members, maybe one of your friends, get their feedback. Was it easy for them to really navigate the site and figure out what they're looking for? And if it wasn't, you probably wanna make some changes and improvements there. If it was, great. You know, you have a good conversion funnel, we call it, which is gonna increase your conversion rate. Number five is interesting. That's one that uh, I think a lot of people don't really think about or miss out on, and that's directional cues. Directional cues are actually really effective. So if you draw an arrow to a call to action button, if you have a picture of somebody looking at the call to action button, similar to the example we have here on the infographic, that's gonna drive great results because what it does is people are just taught since childhood to follow directions, right? So if I see an arrow pointing to something, my eyes go there, right? If I see somebody else looking at something, my eyes go there as well, right? So this is, this is drawing their attention into the call to action, which is gonna increase your conversion rate. Okay, trust builders, number six. People often make decisions based on trust and confidence. So they wanna trust that you're gonna do a good job, that uh, you're the right person to reach out to, and they're, gonna, they're confident that the choice that they made is the right choice, right? And no better way to do that than to showcase reviews and awards on your website. By showcasing reviews and awards and trust badges on your site, like the BBB badge, the top rated local badge, um, and maybe putting some of your recent reviews on your site or embedding a review widget that shows recent reviews, I know Top Rated Local has that feature, is very, very powerful because this tells people right away, hey, this is a real business, they've been in business for a while, they've had customers before me, they know what they're doing, they're experienced, and it looks like based on these reviews, everybody's pretty happy, so there's no reason I shouldn't be, so they're gonna convert, so that's really powerful. So make sure you integrate that in your website, maybe in the footer of your site, or maybe in other various areas you think make sense, but but it's important to have it for sure. Tip number seven, does each page of your website have a place to convert right then and there? Um, and we talked about earlier, you know, three conversions or call to actions, I should say, above the fold. But what if they're below the fold, right? Or what if they're on a back page on your website or somewhere buried in your website researching? There should always be a call to action within sight right? They should never have to scroll up or down to find it. And so really you should always have a call to action within your content in the header and in the footer of your site. So it's always available. And some tips and tricks there, sometimes you can do a fixed header, which is basically a header that kind of sticks to the top of people's windows. Maybe they're on a desktop or a mobile phone. It sticks right at the top of the window. You can even do this where it sticks at the bottom of the window. That way as they're kind of scrolling through the site and everything, they're still gonna see that call to action. So right then and there, when they see the information they were finally looking for with their research, they are like, okay, yep, now I'm ready to convert. And oh, look, there's the button right there. Boom, and they can convert. So that's why you wanna have that. Okay, tip number eight here, 
is, is your service area clear? I can't tell you how many times I've seen this error with service websites to where they have an absolutely gorgeous website. And it really does say kind of who they are and what they do and how to contact them, but it isn't really clear as to where they do it, right? So if I'm looking for a, a roofer, if we stick with that example in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I land on this beautiful website, but it isn't really clear to me that they actually serve Fort Collins, Colorado. It almost to me seems like maybe they serve Denver or even further away, then I may be hesitant to reach out, right? And I may actually even hit the back button if I'm not totally confident. I may not even want to dig to find that information out. So make it extremely clear on your website, right from the home page, right there in the main heading. Hey, we're a top rated local Fort Collins roofer reach out to us for a free quote, that kind of a thing. Don't forget the location piece, because the location piece, that uh, brings a sense of locality to it, and it gives you the confidence like, okay, yeah, this is somebody that's nearby that can help me right now. I don't necessarily want somebody that's outside the area because that's just gonna delay the timeline, and that's not something that I'm looking for. So that's really important, so think about that. Tip number nine is SEO copy. This is another one that gets missed a lot. Sometimes I see a website that looks gorgeous, but it's very limiting in terms of content. It's got a lot of great pictures and, and maybe a couple good headlines, but it doesn't have any real content on the page. You're gonna to wanna to have some content on the page, even if it's at the bottom of the page, for SEO purposes. So make sure you have some content there that's probably more than 500 words that's gonna at least be able to better explain your business, your different services, and you can really optimize that for organic search. Because at the end of the day, if your site's not ranking, it's kind of like having an unbelievably gorgeous office building in the middle of Wyoming, right? Nobody's ever gonna see it. And so you wanna have a website that people are actually seeing, and to have a website people see, you need it to rank, right? Because a lot of the traffic you get from people searching on Google and various things, right? So you wanna make sure your site ranks high for the key words that you want to be visible for. And so you need that content space on your homepage and on all your pages really to optimize that so that it does rank high. We've done a bunch of videos on SEO optimization and how you can help optimize your site for it to rank better. So if this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, take a look at our YouTube channel. Um, it's Marketing360 on YouTube and look at some of our videos and our playlists. We have several that are on essentially SEO and optimization and how to help your site rank better. So check that out. Tip number nine here is, and, and I'm sorry, tip 10, this is the last tip. Um, this is the last tip of the day, and this is a good flow of colors and simple and easy to follow layout. And this is important, right? And there's a, there's a strategy behind this. So think about the brand colors that you have. Try to come up with a color palette of at least two colors. Three colors is even better. And ideally, if you can have three colors, you wanna have one color designated as your main call to action color. Usually go with this as your bright color, whether it be the red or the orange or something like that, something that catches people's eye, typically. Make that your main call to action color. Make your second color your secondary call to action color. Secondary call to actions are call to actions that are important, but not as important as the main call to action. For example, the main call to action might be get a free quote. And everywhere you have the get a free quote button, that would be orange, let's say. And that stands out on your website. A secondary call to action might be something like learn more about this service or call us or contact us or uh, find more information or learn more. Uh, anything like that. Those are also good call to actions, but they're not the final call to action you really want, which is the lead, right? Those are just kind of like research call to actions, uh, call to actions where people are just looking for more, and more information. You want them to be able to find that information. So make that secondary call to action your secondary color, which maybe is blue in this case. So our primary call to action, maybe everywhere it says get a free quote is orange. And our secondary call to action, everywhere it has learn more, that would be blue. So that's a good usage of that. And then the third color would just be the color you integrate with your design, right? Your accents and your different pieces that you integrate throughout your design would be that other third color. So a nice color palette is good and it's smart because now as the user navigates through the website, they start to understand like, okay, that orange thing I keep saying, that's what I wanna click when I'm ready to make a, a decision and move forward with this. I'm gonna to wanna to click that and get a free quote. You've kind of built that into the subconscious mind as they're navigating the site and that's why the colors are important. So 
Hopefully this video gives you some great ideas on how you can optimize your website. There's obviously a ton more ideas than this even. Take a look at our YouTube channel. There's other videos on the same topic. If you have questions, please leave a comment. We'd love to get back to you. If you have other video ideas you'd like to uh, us to cover, leave a comment as well. Like the video, share it with your friends, and hopefully you can follow us for more content like this in the future. We try to put stuff out like this, uh, you know, two, three times a week. So happy marketing. Hope you guys have a great day and get your websites converting at the highest level. Have a good one. Bye.